Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome. And today is September the 10th, 2020. And this is a new human experience podcast. The topic for tonight is dismantling beliefs. So last week, I, I started this week long, um, I would say exploration into beliefs because beliefs are really important. Our beliefs shapes how we experience life, how our reality actually um, looks like to us. So um, hang on, let me. And um, so <clears throat> the um, so our beliefs really shape how we um, manifest how what we do or what we don't do um, in our lives and how we show up in our lives as well. So beliefs uh, are really how we mm, affects how we create the reality that we live in, how we experience the, the reality we live in. So this week, I would like to focus more on really starting how to change our own beliefs, how to dismantle them, because it would be rather handy to to learn. It's a, it's a good skill to have, good tool to know how to dismantle our beliefs so that if um, what we experiencing our 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 um, take on reality is not resonating with us. Then we can actually change it. When we change our beliefs, we we can change our reality. And that's how powerful um, these beliefs actually are. Before I talk about um, how to dismantle a belief, let me start by really recapping what a belief is. So, um, so a belief is basically a story. It's it's a it's um, maybe a little bit more than a story, but you no, know, basically it's a story. It's a story that we tell ourselves. It's a story we tell ourselves. It's a particular um, way that we construct a story internally to interpret what happened. So a belief is is really in essence a story we make up in our head to explain what happened. Why? Why do we like to do that? Because we don't know. Because a lot of the time we don't know why things happen the way they do. And the less we know about um, something, the more we want to create a story to fill in the gap. Because that's, that's part of what our, our mind likes to do is to make up stories. And sometimes those stories are fairly persistent. And when we, when we um, keep thinking the same thoughts, then those become uh, um, really entrenched beliefs. And beliefs actually has a, the story itself has a, an energy. So the more we um, use the same beliefs, we, we go over and over the, the same beliefs and using it, then that belief would gather up energy in our um, in our environment in our body in our energetic fields and so that's um, and actually if you really uh, I, I find that for myself anyways it's my beliefs um, I would feel the the my belief because if I think something that is outside the parameter of the beliefs, if if let's say, I um, I believe that I'm I'm you know not pretty, and all of a sudden um, somebody tells me, oh you look beautiful today, I could then actually just like it's it's like there there's an energy with within me that's kind of um, it's blocking that so that I can I can cannot accept uh, or I cannot appreciate that compliment. So that's, for me, that's how the, the, the energy of a belief actually is, how we actually embody a, a belief is that the, we, it has an energetic signature. And when we come across um, beliefs that is, or, or other things happening, somebody saying something to us or um, something happening that is um, kind of 
outside the the parameter of that belief, then we um, you can feel that there is a stuckness somehow that you don't allow that compliment or that that one off um, happening to be integrated into it into into so that's how your beliefs can protect itself and be able to um, kind of stay true so or I would say stuck or stick around so that you so that you don't change your beliefs every day because um, on some level it's it's not very efficient to change beliefs every day because then um, it's not a very stable environment so beliefs tend to have an a quality to it uh, a way to want to stick around and not be um, it, it does not like to be changed and so that's why it's um, once you allow that belief to take hold a any belief to take hold in your thinking in your in your um, emotional in your um, energetic body then it really takes effort to start to dismantle that. So I would like to kind of give an, an example. So I, one of the example is like personal example is, let's say if I don't believe that I'm a, a beautiful woman, then any, any um, so, so what that belief may show up is that I won't um, really go out of my way to dress up or try to make myself, you know, pretty because on some level I already gave up. Well, why, what's the point of, you know, dressing up because I'm not pretty anyways. So even if I dress up, I would just be, you know, a, a, um, an ugly woman in nice clothes. So that's really how our beliefs shape how our action is. That's one example. Um, another more, I would say, um, universal or, or like more people can maybe be able to relate to is this belief that um, there is heaven and then there is hell and or if not that um, dramatic at least that if we if we do good if we are good then we will be we'll live a good life and so then um, even after we die, then we would leave um, a, a good impression. And so a lot of the, the spiritual, there is, I would say in the spiritual community, part of it is that if we are good, if we do things that are good, then good things will happen, whether it is in this life or in when we passed on, we'll go to a better place, that kind of, um, that kind of um, belief, it's still around. And why is that so? It's because we, as a human body, we don't like, we don't enjoy dying because we don't know what it is like to die. It's an unknown. So death is something that, um, like, as a, a, a living being, we, we, don't, um, we don't understand very well. So, so, when we don't know something, then we try to make up stories in order to fill the gap of our knowledge. So all these beliefs about around what death um, could be like. And, and so that would shape how we live our life as well, because everybody would try to at least um, be good so that we will go to a good place. So, so we believe that there is a good place after we died and then there is a bad place and nobody wants to end up in the bad place. And um, like if you are more of a, a religious person, then yes, there, there's a lot of, I would say a whole um, um, biblical uh, reasons for you to be good because if you're not good if you don't do good then you'd be punished by God you're gonna get um, uh, like God will send floods all these things in order to um, wipe wipe out and clean and cleanse the earth because of all this so all of these um, beliefs like uh, 
so so these are really just beliefs because there truly is no heaven and no hell and and so um the the idea of heaven and and hell is really a story that we make up albeit a, a story that has a lot of people um if if not consciously at least unconsciously even people that are not religious they would have some um somehow believe that if they don't do they will feel this guilt there's a guilty feeling to it when they when they don't do um things that are for the people so this is really all about um an example about <clears throat> what beliefs is it's belief is it's when it is um, like if it's something we know, then it's a knowledge, it's a knowing. If it's a fact, then it is the same thing no matter who is looking at it. But the belief is something that is not proven, and we don't um, we don't know something. And it usually comes about when there is a lot of unknown and, and, and uncertainty. Then we. Uh, our mind fill those in with beliefs. So the the beliefs is really um, stories that we make up in our mind. For example, if <clears throat> let's say if um mm, mm, let's see what is so let's say if I really want to um be the president or, or prime minister of Canada. So and and I actually go to to run uh, for for being the prime minister and and all that, but I lost. So then, um, because I don't know all the reasons why I didn't get to to experience what I want to experience. So in my mind, I would make up stories. It's like, oh, that's because I'm not good enough, maybe. Or I would make up a story like, oh, that's because I'm not savvy enough to, um, you know, make deals with um, like important people because I don't know enough influential people. That's why I did not get elected as the prime minister. So, so because we don't know something and we, and we have certain experience that we resist and we don't like so we make up stories in our mind to to kind of um um give us a a, a pers uh, have really um col color the experience that we have in a way to or, or I should say maybe to somehow justify it to um make us feel either less guilty or um so so depending on what our beliefs really are, if at the core we believe that we're not good enough, then um, the beliefs of all of these things is really to support that, to support, see, I did not get elected. That's because I'm not good enough. Or see, I didn't get, um, I didn't make a million dollars. That's why I'm not good enough something like that so a lot of the the times <clears throat> that's really how beliefs are adopted some of sometimes in uh, beliefs may be not something that we it's not really something that we have adopted from our own experience it could be something that is passed down from um, our mothers or fathers uh, or um, any anyone else in our family or anyone else that we know of or even something that we uh, have read in the book and if it's something that would somehow resonate with a part of us then we we unconsciously maybe consciously or unconsciously adopt that belief so that's really what a belief is and in knowing what a belief is that actually helps us to dismantle the beliefs because the first thing that we really can start to, um, if not dismantle, at least loosen the beliefs. And that would be is to, the first thing is to really separate, separate what it is that we know and what it is that we don't know. Because one of the, the, 
the um, I would say the characteristics of beliefs is that beliefs is something that we don't know. We don't know what really happened. Like I don't know what really happened. That's why I did not get elected. It could be because I did not um, <clears throat> talk to enough people. It's not that I don't know uh, the influential people, but maybe because I did not take the time to talk to enough people. That's why mm, people there's not enough people that even know who I am. So that may be, so, so one of the, the first thing is to separate what you know from what you don't know, because it is um, what you know uh, are truths, are facts that you can see and you know, or you somehow can verify. And so when you separate what things that you know versus things that you don't know, then you start to loosen the, the beliefs. And then the second thing that you can do, it's really start to, um, like when you want to dismantle a belief, is to, so let's say a belief is I'm not good enough. Then the, the way is to find um, instances of, of um, when things go your way, when people compliment you that, oh, you're so good at this. So then, so then when, um, when I hear more of these, when I start to remember and, um, and take notice of the instances where I am actually, um, people actually tell me that I am good. I'm good at what I do. That, um, so these are evidence that, that goes against the belief that I'm not good enough. Is these examples of I am good enough. So a lot of the times when we are in the belief, we might discount, even when we hear it, we discount it. However, when you want to start to dismantle a belief is to actually remember those times when people actually tell you something, give you some feedback that it goes against your belief. It's, it's kind of, um, so, so look for the exception because a belief will only, can only hold true when um, it's supported when it is supported. So the more you, more instances that it's supported, then the, it's like more layers to, to make sure that that belief is more um, possibility or probability of being true. So when you start to look and really actively and, um, and in a decide, like really decide to look for examples of when and where that belief is not true, then you start to loosen that belief. Um, so you start to loosen the belief. And then, and then the other thing is to ask yourself, does this belief create a reality that you really want to experience? Because sometimes we believe, but we, I already, mentioned that a belief is not the truth. It is never the truth. It is just a story that we make up. So we can as well make up any other story because we don't know. If we know that is a knowing, a knowing is very different from a belief. So when it is simply a belief, then you have to think and really start to ask yourself, does this belief create a reality that you want to experience? And if you, and you may answer yes, or you may answer no. And if you don't, then it's, it's, um, it's really um, to time to, or more ammunition to dis and be able to easier for you to dismantle that belief. And sometimes you may say, oh, well, actually, um, no, I don't think I, I like the, the reality that, that, I, that this belief would, <clears throat> would um, 
create for me that I don't like the reality that and the experience that this belief would create for me, then start to think of what are some of the other um, possibility of a different story that will that will explain the situation for you. So be creative. It could be any other story. So so when you have other stories, other possible way uh, that you can believe, then really pick the belief that will support the reality that you want to experience. Start to do that. Be more flexible with your beliefs and don't hold that your beliefs are are real because it never is. If it's real, then it's a knowledge. It's no longer a belief. Things that you know is very different from things that you believe because the belief is um, is comes up because of unknown. Because if we don't know something, then we we make up beliefs about it. So then the. Um, the other thing is to ask yourself, is this belief helpful? Does it help you understand something? And really start to um, get back to why you took on that belief in the first place. Because at the, um, a belief, we took on a belief, um, nobody really want to take on beliefs that that is... Um, that gives us a bad experience or give us a, a less than optimal experience. Nobody likes to do that. Nobody sets out to do that. We pick our beliefs because the beliefs were helpful at one point. Maybe you had this belief, let's say for 10 years, maybe the first year that you had this belief, it was helpful. It, it, it gives you some comfort. It gave you, um, a, uh, a level of, or I would say, less anxiety because in, um, we don't like things that we don't know. So that's why we make up these stories to, to fill in the gap of our knowledge. And that belief, which could have been helpful at one point, however, 10 years later, or maybe sometimes even, you know, three months later, it's no longer helpful anymore. So then you need to um, review, is, is this belief still helpful? If not, then, then it is time to dismantle that belief. So how to actually do it? Um, do a, so these few, few steps uh, is really the, the more, I would say, conscious and cognitive way to start to loosen your beliefs, so to so get some understanding of why you adopted the belief in the first place and to really think of other options, other way to look at the same situation to, to I would say, um, kind of go on a shopping, go on a shopping trip to, to find out other beliefs that may be better suited to you now because it's, it's a story. So why not make up a better story? Why um, go with a story that no longer serves you? So when you've done a little bit of these, these loosening of the beliefs, then you can start to really go at dismantling the beliefs. And beliefs is um, really just energy because it's a thought. It's a thought form and it's, it has an emotional content to it because something happened and we didn't like it. We resist that experience. And so that's why we start to, um, to, to create and manufacture in our mind these beliefs. So then there's that resistance. So the first thing is really to start to let go of the emotional component of that certain beliefs, the emotional um, um, content of it. So let's, let's go back to, for example, um, I believe at one point, I believe that I'm not good enough. So what happened? It could be, oh, when I was young or when I was really little, my mom you know, yelled at me because I, I, I did something stupid. 
for example, I, you know, jump in a, a mud puddle because it was fun to jump in in the mud. But my mom did not appreciate it um, that I made myself all dirty, you know, all that, and, and gave her so much more work. So, so then she yelled at me, and I created this this um, belief that oh, I'm not good enough. That's why my mom was was yelling at me. <clears throat> so then, the the resist is that I resisted my mom. Or, or that experience of feeling bad, feeling and 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 so it's an anger, it's it's a, it's a fear and all that. So the first step is really to let go of the fear, let go of the anger. So it's the first thing is without even doing anything about the beliefs, is really to disarm the beliefs because the belief really has energy because of the the emotional content of it when we can simply let go of the emotions that were stuck still in our body then the it's much easier to pick the new beliefs because you have um this you have disarmed the beliefs so then let go of beliefs how to let go of beliefs you just choose to let go of it it's energy. So energy, your body knows how to process energy. What is really lacking is for you to um, align yourself. So choose and really choose. Align yourself with, um, so be in your heart. Be in your heart. So that you don't have a lot of um, internal dialogue, be in your heart, and then simply align yourself. Aligning meaning um, choose to be in your heart, choose to um, have your body and your emotions and your your thinking and your entity, all parts of yourself. Just choose to have all of that aligned so that everything could be um, going the same direction. So choose to be in alignment with yourself first. And then um, because you're working with energy, so I will also suggest that you get some ass assistance. So, so meaning connect to um, more powerful energy. So very simple is connect to earth because earth is a, um, it's a big entity. It's compared to a human body, it's a much bigger entity. So connect to the earth. So that's why when I do um, energy work with anybody um, and, and even meditation, I would always connect to mother earth and also connect to the sun to Father Sky, because those, those are really connecting to um, natural phenomena that everyone is familiar with and they know and they're comfortable with. So connect to, to uh, stronger energy. And, um, and you can also, if, you, if it resonates with you, is to, instead of connecting to the stronger energies is to just tell yourself to shift to a higher frequency. Um, that's why instead of connecting to, to heaven and uh, like uh, earth and, and the sun, uh, Sifu James would start to shift energy to higher through higher frequency. So that's also another way of, of doing it is to really um, amp up and, and, and really to bump up the energy level is to shift to five to eight or five million or, or in whatever the, the, the frequency that, that really works for you. So get some assistance. That's what the assistance really is, is about. And then after you've connected all of that, then the rest is simply to choose to let go of that emotion, let go of the, the fear let go of the, 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 the pain or let go of the anger 
of the um that was stuck in that story <clears throat> that you have made um in with the, the 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 belief so um and also suggest that you because energy we can feel it in our body so that's why i suggest that you let's say let's say fear so just when you when you focus on wanting to release fear then feel where that fear is so just um in your mind just um focus on i want to release fear and when you do that you you would most likely feel that a certain part of your body would be would light up or well okay not not really light up is there's a sensation that would kind of it's it's really your body's way of letting you oh you want to release fear so here i feel this fear around this part of the body so there's some um energy that is um associated with fear is is around a certain part of your body so that usually is what um, happens so you may or may not have that however um you may you may um, feel like, oh, okay, when you think of fear, then certain, uh, a certain part of your anatomy would um, all of a sudden have a sensation. So then just take it as that. And if you really have no idea, you can't feel anything, then just um, <clears throat> go with what is um, commonly known. For example, fear is really in, in the... In, the um you can feel it in your gut it's a gut fee fear so fear is like it could be in the gut or it could be in your your kidney so so those are more of the the commonly um stored uh, organs that store fear so that's why when um when you when you are uh, nervous you or something that is anxious you need to or could be fear as well then you need to you go to the bathroom um, more often so so that's why kidney is associated with fear nervousness that kind of emotions so if you really can't help uh, can can't um feel where that energy is stuck in your body then just go with what is the um, more traditional organ for example frustration anger it's more liver um, and um, sadness is more lungs those those are the, the the different emotions that's associated with organs in the body so you can uh, use either if you cannot feel if your body does not communicate with you um, in a more clear way then go for the, the the commonly known organs and just focus on that that organ and start to breathe like imagine breathing through that part of your body that you you want you associated with the emotion that you want to release so just breathe into that breathing in just imagine pulling energy in, pulling new energy in and imagine as you breathe out that you are letting go of things that are no longer supporting you because you are really communicating with your unconscious mind that this is what i want to do so when you're giving that instruction to your unconscious mind your unconscious mind already knows how to process energy so all you have to do is really give your unconscious mind the the direction and the intention that this is what you want to do so <clears throat> so when you really just just breathe in to the the part of your body that's associated with the um the energy that you, and the emotion you want to release and you breathe out and release it 
So what that does, why do I want to um, focus on a, a part of, of this? It's because it's a calibration. It allows you to um, have an idea of when there is a shift. Because when that, when you find that the, the, the sensation shifts and when you work with energy and when you do that, then invariably there would be a shift. So when you feel the shift in your body, that kind of gives you a reassurance that it is done. So that's how you calibrate on whether it is, um, whether anything has happened, whether you actually do have done something. Because we, we, most people don't see energy. We can only feel. Um, we can feel whether it's heavy or blocked or whether there's pain or no pain, whether it's cold, whether it's warm. We can feel those. But um, um, when we don't see energy, we have to rely on the other senses to give us the, the, the reassurance that it is done. So that's why I also would suggest that you, when you do the release work, is to um, associate a part of your body so that it makes it easier for you to, to know when it is, there is a shift. So when you have really let go of the, the, the emotional part of it, then the next one, it's really to, um, to go for choosing to change that belief. So then it is also a, it is also a um, really more of a choosing because belief is the, the energy. So when you start to choose, you also giving your unconscious mind the, the, the direction is that this, this belief, this energy no longer support me. So I want to let go of that. So you start to um, feel. So give yourself a, a reading first. Let's say if, if we're working on the, the belief that, oh, I'm not good enough, then before you actually um, let it go, is to give yourself a, um, have some idea. Is it a 10? Do I 100% believe in this? Or am I only about, um, you know, eight? eight out of a 10 or a five out of a 10, whatever number is, it's fine. You can do, you can use, you know, eight out of 10 or you can use out of a hundred, whatever works better for you. So give yourself a starting point. Let's say if it's a, a seven or, or an eight that I don't think I'm good enough is, I believe it in 70% of the time, it's, it's a seven. So then you start to do the, the okay, I give the, the, the instruction to your body that you are now ready to let go of that belief. And then just breathe into, just set that intention and just breathe in and breathe out. And as you breathe out, you're letting go of that belief as well. And then just start to, you start to feel the, the, the energy moving in your, um, well, okay, you may or may not feel it, but I, I usually can feel something moving, the, the energy moving. Um, and even if you don't feel it in your body, you may start to um, feel that the, that belief is no longer as solid as before. And that's really what you're looking for. So give yourself maybe, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes and then really check in and check in to see where you're at. So just, so are you at, um, are you at now? I guess you start off with a seven. Are you at a five now or are you all the way down to a two or even a zero? So just, it's, it's not real. You have to know that it is, it's not real. It is really whether you can convince yourself that it is gone. 
So when you can say, oh, okay, that belief is no longer as strong as before, it is now, let's say, um, a three, then it's really up to you whether you want to work with it a little longer, maybe give, give it another five, 10 minutes. I, my suggestion is don't, um, don't spend um, an hour or two on something like that in releasing energy, it's, it's too long. Um, give yourself a good 10, 20 minutes or maybe at most half an hour to do this, this work. So then even if you're not down to a zero in dismantling that belief in that session is um, just go for half an hour at first. If you're, if you're doing this the first time, just go for half an hour. Usually if you're really um, letting go of things, then you should be able to go and see a big shift with even five, 10 minutes. There, there would be a big shift. However, just to, if you are new at this, then give yourself at most 30 minutes to do it. And then just end the session for that day. Maybe you can only do, take it down to about 30%, then that's, that's good enough for that day. Don't try to um, go from you know, a seven or even a 10 down to a zero. Don't aim for zero yet because it's not so much about letting go of the energy. It's the other part is to also take action because when you, when you send, spend all the time to do the releasing, but you don't give yourself time to um, take action, then it makes no difference whether you, um, you believe in something or you don't, because if you don't take action, you never know what else is still there. A belief is usually not just a one-off by itself. They usually are supporting beliefs. So when you start to take one out, then take some action. So when you take action, it's let's say, um, my, my belief that I'm not good enough um, makes me, oh, let's say I don't like to take action. I usually want to be more of a um, you know, stand by and look and see, make sure that and, and see if other people get results. If they get results, then I may or may not start to take um, action. So then when I do some dismantling on that belief, then what I need to change is, is to really be um, more eager to jump in because that the belief is what's holding me back. So in order to really um, live life, live a different reality from that, from the belief, then I need to take different action. So if my belief is holding me back by um, making me more of a passive person, then the, the then with the more I take action, the more I do not hold back, the more I'm convincing myself that that belief no longer has any hold on me. So it's, that's why I suggest is to um, not just spend the whole day dismantling beliefs, in, even though, yeah, you may be, uh, you may feel really nice, However, it is really in the taking action, taking action from beyond, uh, from the who you are beyond the belief. When you start to take action, when you start to um, just jump in to do things, when I start to just jump in and do things and just be more spontaneous and, and just you know, take more chances, then I'm actually busting out of that belief. So it's, so dismantling beliefs really has a few parts to it. 
part one is you start to loosen it. Time start to do a little bit of cognitive. It's about, you know, um, finding examples where in your life where things does not um, support your beliefs. So do a little bit of cognitive and, um, and conscious um, or more brain work on dismantling and loosening the belief and then let go of the emotional portion of it because the emotions is really what gives it the most power and then do some and then do the the letting go of the beliefs is really to choose to choose and let go of the all the rest of the energetic part of it and then the last part is really to take action Choose and take action from who you are beyond that belief. So that's, that's really the, um, the process of dismantling a belief, any belief.